Hey folks, welcome to Eddie's Garage. Uh, to, today I'm going to be uh, starting on a, a new project. I'm putting together a toolbox for a friend. Actually, it's like a truck box. And I'll be uh, cleaning all the pieces off with acetone prior to any welding. As you can see, I'm taking off a lot of that uh, stuff that comes on it during the course of it being transported and stuff like that. Um, Let's see here. I'm trying to wait for the video. All right. Here I'm kind of measuring off the, the sides, making sure that I've got the right distance going on. I also do measure from corner to corner, but, you know, it's just kind of how I do things. Once I get it all measured in best I can, I'm, uh, I tap in the sides here with, the, with my magnets on, making sure that they're all, you know, all the sides, are, all the panels are lined up properly. Um, I mean, it, it, it does take a little while to do right, but once you get it, get it together, um, you can go ahead and uh, get into the spot welding side of it. Um, I did have these side panels pre-cut for, for convenience, but, um, but yeah, if you, if you can do something like that on your own and get these panels pre-cut, it's going to save you a lot of time. I do have a plasma cutter, and I... And I do use it, but for the sake of getting this job done as quick as possible, I just thought it would be easier just to have the panels cut. Um, here I am spot welding the outside edges, making sure everything is the way it should be. And I have a really tight space to work within. You know, I got my razor on one side and my welding table on the other, so I don't have a lot of space. And as you can see here, I've got my main my main panel on the floor. I've got my sides and my my, my side panels and my back panel spot welded. Now I'm going to spot weld the the panel on the floor. I'll tell you, you know, you can never have enough magnets, right? You probably heard that that saying a hundred a hundred times or more. Um, as a welder, the more mag magnets you have, the the better. So, and there you see my. Spot welding the inside. And then you see my, my welder's card to the left there too. I've got my plasma cutter on there as well. Um, yeah, going back, double checking. Doing some more welding. Now I will be welding all those seams once it's all said and done. And uh, I initially I was going to weld just the the uh, out the outside, but decided to just weld the inside of the box to have it look aesthetically better on the outside. Although I do a little bit of welding on the outside as well. I'm just scraping off some of that residue from the weld that that happens um, when when you when you lay down a bead. And uh, checking for any any splatter. And then any spots that I might might have missed along the way. Um, I wish I had a bigger garage. I'd be able to sprawl this thing out, but I simply don't. This was a project that I took on on my own. Um, so now I'm at the point where uh, I've got the tops on, I've got the bottoms, the panels, you know, the back panel, the. And I'm just kind of just welding away, basically. Um, I was going to place it on top of the welder's table, but it was uh, it was getting a little heavy, and I just thought, well, you know, let me just do it on the floor. That shouldn't be a problem. I really had to make sure that I got some good solid beads in there to avoid any issues. Now this here are the uh, this is just two inch flat stock that I'm going to be using for the the fascia, the the front uh, fascia 
it's going to be like the, the, the steel fascia sides that are going to go up on the front of the box because I'm going to create a lip off of that as well. And you'll see more about what I'm talking about as we get closer toward this, uh, the, the finish of this build. This was the only um, piece of metal that I decided to go ahead and um, clean all the way through. I mean, clean the mill scale off completely. You know, you, sometimes you just get steel that you just should clean with a grinder, whereas others, I find that you don't need to. I mean, I mean that whole box had mill scale on it. If I tried to clean all that mill scale off, it would have taken me forever. And um, I can't say I've ever had any issues with, with or any weld issues in the past that uh, would lead me to believe that it was because of mill scale that, that was on it. Um, in fact, I had no issues in the past. With, with welding over mill scale. Um, but sometimes you have to take off the mill scale like I'm doing here on this flat stock because it was just too flaky and loose and, and you, just, you know, you just use your best judgment when it comes to stuff like that. I was really enjoying myself on this project so far. Um, it was, you know, again, it's my first toolbox and I was doing it for a friend and, um, you know, I've got my old trusted DeWalt grinder there. You know, actually, when I was done with this project, I, I went out and, and bought, um, well, I ordered two more grinders, DeWalt grinders, and I'm glad that I did. I love them. I mean, this is a nice grinder, but it's old, and it doesn't have a lot of the safety features the new grinders have today. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm always in fear of, of the you know one of these things just popping back and hitting me in the face and you know you hear stories all the time so safety is everything I I did get a safety mask so I'm, I'm kinda glad about that you know and then I gotta take a break cuz you know you've been down like that and an old man kinda gets to you <laughs> um, let's see I don't know what I'm checking for here, but let's move on to the next. All right. And I'm sanding off the smaller pieces here. You know, they needed it too. Again, when you work with steel, it's it's always good to make sure that you, you have a clean piece. But you know you can't always clean it all I mean I like I said if I tried to clean that whole box and those all those you know those side panels in and out it just would have I would have went through more discs than it was worth so I just clean where the welds were gonna go mostly I think that's what most guys do anyway and again I'm still fairly an amateur at, at welding and I, there's a lot I don't know so I know you guys are going to be looking at this and maybe seeing what I could have done better and throw some pointers at you know out at me, but I do what I can with what I got. I love my Millomatic 215. It's a, it's a fairly new welder. It's it's so far it's done everything I need it. The only thing I have not done with it yet was TIG and stick weld, and I plan on learning how to do that. So right now, as you can see, I've got the uh, the. Those remember those two long pieces I was uh, uh, sanding down. Well, they're on there now. I've spotted, I've spot welded them on, and I'm still doing it. You kind of see where the box is going now. I've already welded all the seams on the inside of the box. Got a little bit of warpage because of the heat on the on the met, on the you know the uh, the side panels and stuff. But when it was all said and done, it wasn't that bad. And I did have to fluctuate with my voltage and my my gauge setting simply because of the different types of thickness steels that I was using. At this point, the box was getting heavy to move, and I didn't really like moving it on the floor like that. And it just dawned on me, at some point during this whole process, it dawned on me that I had dollies that I could have used. Um, I just forgot that I had them. So, you know, if you guys have a suggestion on a, on a good filter mask that I could use for welding that will fit in my welder's helmet comfortably, let me know. I'm, I'm starting to sniff too much welder smoke and 
I don't think it's good for me. So if you have any suggestions, go ahead and throw them out. Um, so those two shorter panels or those two shorter pieces you saw me clean off earlier, those are going to go be welded on the sides there, as you can see right now. I well I spot welded those. So as, you know, as you can see, the the box is starting to really shape up. You know, you can actually. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done that side yet, but and and I did go back and weld all those uh, welds down and everything. So here is the the box on top of my welder's table, and now you get a better look of what it's going to look like. Let me take a drink here. Mm -hmm. There it goes again from another angle. And again, I'm going to come back and weld down those, well, not weld down, but grind down those welds. Now, this was probably one of the hardest parts of the job. You know, I had to go in there and weld the seam all the way to the end. I had to weld it on the sides to the top. Any seam in that box had to be welded from a to, from point to point beginning to end and I had to do you know I, I you know again I was messing with my voltage so that I wasn't blowing a hole through the steel but at the same time getting the bead that I needed I tried to make it as neat you know get a get as good a bead as possible but I knew this was going to be on the inside of the box and didn't worry so much as much about it as I did when I was uh, welding the seams on the outside of the box. I really like that anti-splatter uh, stuff that I use every now and then. I mean, sometimes it splatters kind of weird, and I don't, um, and I wonder why, you know, but. It, like after the first couple welds it's it starts working fairly well now I got a light in there if you haven't you know if you've noticed already um, I don't know you know I, I it's really hard for me to see through a helmet sometimes and I don't know if you guys have the same problem but you know maybe I'll try adjusting my shade a little better you know it, it gets me how they don't invent a helmet with some really bright LED lights on the very front of it so that you can go ahead and just have it. I know it's it, it almost seems counterproductive being that the light from the from the weld would would be enough but I don't know sometimes I just need some light there I am I'm checking my voltage I think yeah that was probably going too hot and it was kinda probably melting through a little bit Okay, and there's another angle. Uh, once I got my, looks like I got a little bit of spark on the back of my neck. I know if some of you have welded, you know what that feels like. It's good to have those uh, those welders um, hats. They call them. It's, it's like a piece of fabric that goes over your head, and it protects your 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 hair and your head from any overhead sparks. It really does work. I, I would recommend one if you have if you don't have one already. And now it's. Most likely just covering up some some gaps there that that needed to be welded over. I believe the setting at this point was uh, I think I was at I think I welded these some of, some of these seams at 16, 16 gauge even though it was fourteen gauge steel with an adjustment of the voltage a little bit so I wouldn't blow a hole through the steel. I mean when you when you when you weld that that much of seam it just just gets really hot. And 
you know, could cause issues. So here I am. I'm, I've decided to weld these outside pieces as well. Um, I made sure I got a, a, you know, I got some fairly long beads on those front pieces so that um, there would be no compromise in, in, in the steel whatsoever. It wouldn't bend either way and it would be sturdy and, and stay where it needed. So I did that. Here is the back of the box and I'm doing the same thing here. There were some gaps, you know, very minute gaps, but I felt that if I if I covered the gaps where they needed, one, they would the, the integrity of the box would be stronger, and two, um, I could always come back and grind all those uh, those welds down flush. I don't I, I, when I did this job, I didn't have the best the I had my old grinder, and it's not you know it's not very powerful, and I didn't have good enough flap discs to to do the job with with so next time I'll, I'll know more about what what to do I went through a lot of discs um, just to weld down those grinds next time I'm, I'm gonna use a thicker uh, grinding wheel more of a coarse grinding wheel to weld the, the weld to grind the welds down and then come back and use a, a flap disc to, to smooth it out but again I'm, I'm still sort of an amateur welder and I'm, I'm learning the process and um, jobs like this are so big I you know to hit and miss okay so <clears throat> being that that bottom part is going to be the top of the box I decided to throw a little beam in there sort of a, a, a steel beam so that it it would be a lot more stable my guess is that the guy that's getting this you know my friend who's getting this box will want to sit on the top of that box maybe once in a while he may want to throw some stuff on it who knows all I know is that I didn't I didn't want just for it to be one long piece of flat metal especially being it's only 14 gauge. As this box was being welded into a nice solid square box, um, it started holding up real strong. I mean, you know, the, when the sides went up and then those front fascia pieces went up and then the cross beam went up, um, when those things started going, when I started welding those pieces in is when I started really getting a sense of how strong this box was going to become. So, you know, even though I went 14 gauge on the on the on the panels, I probably if I wanted could have I don't know, you probably could go 16 gauge, but I think that's pushing it. I think 14 gauge is a good a good gauge to use when building a toolbox um, and uh, not have any issues. Okay, so here I am grinding down all of those wells that I said I would. Uh Again, I went through. I, I started out with some, some 60s, went through those. Then you know had to deal with some 80s that I had, and and see my sparks flying. I always get worried about sparks. You know, I, I have these like, um, these these like uh, flame blankets. I forgot what they call them again. They, you know, you can hang them up, and so wherever the sparks go. Hopefully it'll hit the blanket and not anything you know behind it. So I try to control the spark where where it goes, but it it's like water, you know. <laughs> you can't always control it. It took me a while to grind these welds down. I was amazed at how dirty my floor could get with grinding grinding down so much metal. Okay. <clears throat> so these uh, pieces here I I decided to also grind the mill scale off of completely. Just because it just the mill scale wasn't on there very good, it's ironic, you know. This is like the only piece, <laughs> you know. I say, you, you know, I, I I typically weld over mill scale, but sometimes you simply can't. You you have to clean whatever piece you're gonna weld, and you should always have a clean piece, especially these because it wasn't that they weren't. I mean, it wasn't 
that much steel to clean off, so it was worth it was worth it for me to do it right, so I wouldn't have any issues. So you can see a lot of what I do is on the floor. Okay, so I'm getting that bottom piece as you you saw you saw me just grind weld it up. You can see my magnets are holding that piece up the way it should. Those uh you're gonna have a piece like that on the bottom top and on the sides. I got that idea from a toolbox that I have on my truck. Now typically the way something like that is is done I believe is they just form it at the at the factory so they'll take a piece of steel and they'll they'll use a handbrake and just bend um, bend it over for it to work but I didn't you know obviously I didn't have a handbrake that long and so that's why I had to weld all these seams even for the panel you know the panels on the box as well <clears throat> okay so if I can see this correctly I don't know if I got the the top p uh, lip on or not no do I let me see yeah it looks like I might have done the top lip because I'm welding the seam across the inside of that top yeah I got it on there so yeah that's what I'm doing um, I'm welding a, a nice bead all the way down to the end so that you know no water will get through and it'll hold up that that piece nice and sturdy and this is where the voltage change had to come in because again the um, the heat of that weld was warping that lip that that metal piece piece and so you know I tried to keep it as straight as possible I, you know I, there are ways where you know I could always have weld it and, and then let it cool down come back and weld a little more but I don't know if you guys have a better way of doing this um, you know feel free to let me know but this was the only way that I saw at the end of the day I you know it wasn't really that noticeable after it was all you know after the you know I, I got it all painted and everything it looked pretty good and there was some warpage but not drastic on that piece it would have been nice to have a handbrake for this job you know so that I could go ahead and and do that and here you know got my head in there I'd, <laughs> I was smelling a lot of smoke so again if you guys have a suggestion for a good filter system that'll fit comfortably under a, a welder's helmet let me know I'll do a little research on my end but I don't know I all this stuff you know I try to wear goggles and a welder's helmet so now and then now you'll have a, a respirator too it just seems like a lot but it's you know safety comes first um all right so this is just another angle and now i've got my okay so that is one of the new grinders that i bought um, actually, I, did, I forgot I had that in here. This uh, this grinder is just amazing. It's a 13 amp grind Dewalt grinder, um, and it's got some real nice uh, safety features on it. It's got like a, a an anti locking pin system, so if your 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 uh, disc gets stuck or something or pinches in the steel while you're cutting. It stops the motor and it 
you know. And you can see I got the sides welded up too. Right, there's another angle there. So now I'm going to go ahead and weld the inside or grind the inside weld. And the reason for this, this is actually, let me see, is that the top or the bottom? I think, I think that's the, yeah, that would be the top because I, I don't think I would have done the bottom. Yeah, that's the top because the thing is that when I put my, lat I was thinking once I put my latches on that I didn't want too thick of a weld to get in the way of the lock trying to cl uh, close. Uh, you know, like the weld getting in the way, especially after, you know, it was painted and I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I tried to get that, those welds down in say about a three, maybe two, two and a half foot length. Like I didn't grind it all the way down all, you know, in some areas I grinded more than others because I kind of estimated where the lock would go. So and even though the lock wouldn't go right there, I still, you know, if, if, if the weld was grossly obvious, I grinded it anyway. All right, so here I am just kind of grinding things down again with my old grinder. Honestly, now that I know how to make one of these, I, I don't think I'll ever order another box again. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it wasn't that hard to do. Um, it was just hard to maneuver and, and pick up the box and because these pieces were so long. And there I am doing some more grinding. If you look behind me, there's the lid. And I'm grinding down all those welds back there as well. And I'm putting a, one of those uh, flame retardant blankets over my, my equipment because, you know, it was hitting it, all the sparks was hitting my welder and stuff. and. Again, I use the Millimatic 215, and, you know, I've had some people say, I've, actually, it got a lot of great reviews, and that was the reason why I bought it, but some guys say that uh, it's, you know, feels like a toy to them, but I like it. I think it's a good machine, and there I am, grinding some more welds. Actually, I also did a little bit of grinding on the, on the panel itself to get some scratches out and stuff, so... It's, you know, a lot of it, this is all part of the prep work prior to paint, right? So it's all about the prep work. It's no, no different than putting in a hardwood floor or, or a tile. Because once the paint's on it, you're going to really see the mistakes, you know. So I thought you guys would get a kick out of this. You can see how big the box really is. <laughs> There I am, inside, you know, I was inside of it, and I'm going to go in and try and weld the, try and grind the inside of those welds, doing it with the box vertical. So I'm about 5'9", so you get an idea on how tall the box is. Okay, and this is uh, the point where I'm putting on the hinges. Now, I don't show you all of the hinges I put on, but you can see that I'm, I'm spot welding them there. I put four hinges down, and I believe they're two-inch hinges. 
and you can see that that front panel is on now that lid and I had that lid I actually had them bend the 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 lips over on that lid about a three three quarter inches over and that worked out perfectly now here I am lining out where the the, the latches are going to go this took me a while really it did because I I mean there's no room for error in this process so you really have to take your time as to where placement is going to be and that everything is straight um, and then there is the now don't make fun of my my cutting here because in a minute you're gonna see how how crooked I, I, I I'm using I mean I obviously need some practice with the plasma cutter but but anyway I'm using the 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 plasma uh, XT40 and that is uh, a wonderful machine I I mean I used to have a a Chinese knockoff plasma cutter and um, after about oh I would say the fifth or sixth use it was um, useless to me it, it didn't work anymore it wasn't cutting properly it was building up a lot of slag and even though I did cut this little crooked um, I don't know why I'm doing it that way it's actually comical I, I went in and, 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 and grinded in those those sides and, it, and a, a lot of those ripples and stuff came came out real nice and smooth so it wasn't a problem it's just if you don't have a plasma cutter I'll tell you they're worth their weight in gold um, because you can do stuff just like this and I went through that 1 8 inch steel it was 11 gauge I believe like it was nothing I mean the only thing I wish I would have done before I did this was spray some anti splatter inside the box itself because when it was done you had a lot of those uh, you know the, a lot of the the sparks and stuff cause beads and stuff on the ground and it, it got kind of nasty in there and it took me a while to clean it up nice but if I had put that anti splatter stuff in there I could have just easily cleaned it off and it wouldn't have been a problem okay so I'm not sure why this is showing up maybe this is the other side oh well, wait a minute now could be the other side I'll let you know in a minute if the lines come out straighter then it's the other side <laughs> Well, they didn't really come out straight, did they? I think I just might have duplicated this part. Well, anyway, might as well watch it again. It's, it's. I, I honestly, it's, it's kind of cool to watch just to know that uh, this, this little handheld device could do so much work for you. And and. Uh, now I what's cool about this plasma cutter is it's it's very user friendly it's you know you could set you know if you if you have it plugged into a 120 volt uh, um, 120 socket it you know you're it it'll it'll automatically you know give you the setting that you need to to make your cut. And it just fell right through. Anyway, so we got to see that twice. I am not working my editing there. I'm <laughs> All right, so and at some point I will be drilling. And then there it is again. Um you can see it's a little cleaned up. Actually it's a lot lot better than it was. I'm um but I think I still do a little bit more. Yeah, I, I use a different kind of grinder with a metal grinding attachment on the end of it. It's an air grinder, is what it is. And those those little I, now I, I they're like a, those little metal grinding wheels on the end of it. 
I forgot what they call those, and I apologize for that. But basically, I mean, they just, they literally just take steel right off. You see how it's jumping there? Um, it's doing that because I, I think, you know, I have my, my compressor up a little too high for it. Um, but then even when I lowered the PSI down, it still kind of jumped on me. It's really hard to to grind the, the edges down with this thing because um, it does jump on you. It's a little scary. So wait, make sure you wear goggles. Maybe you guys have an, a, you, you might have some advice as to how I can do this a little better. You know, let me know why it does jump the way that it does. Um, in some areas it didn't jump. You know, I tried to keep a nice, strong, steady hand over it. But uh, it didn't take long to grind those the you know those ripples down to get a nice um, clean surface smooth surface I should say so this is the other side and it you know it took a little while for me to actually make the hole in such a way that it would both fit the locks as well as the holes that I drilled for the for this um, for the screws on the lock so that I could put a nut on them so it took a while it you know this to be honest this was probably the most uh, um, like nervous this I was the most nervous doing these holes and, and everything because again there was no room for error you know, that's the thing about working with steel. I mean, I know you know with steel, steel can be like wood, and you can always fix things. But the last thing I wanted was to either make a hole way too big, or you know, small was okay. You can always go bigger, but to make it way too big, or put it in the wrong place, or cut it in an angle, and then you're screwed. You know, you you have to you would have to cover that whole hole with a piece of uh, metal, grind the metal down. Um, make it look like it was never even there and you know who wants to do that right so so again there's just simply no room for error here you just take your time you line it out if you're gonna take uh, yeah so if you're gonna take if, if, you know if, you, if you're gonna take a little time on anything you know it, I wouldn't do it on the on the cutting of those holes and and shaping them out so that your lock will fit properly. And I'm sure glad I had those guys uh, bend those edges over for me, you know, because there's no way. I, I think, I, you know, it was a smart move, I think, because it would have just really been overkill on the whole welding seam part if I also got some flat stock and welded the seams around those, um, around that lid. And it was there wasn't much of a difference in savings. I think I would have saved maybe I don't know. I think it was on thirty five, forty bucks. And, you know, honestly, anytime you can afford to, you know, I have a plasma cutter, so I can cut this steel down. But if you don't have one, you know, and you have a big project, having them cut it down at at ten or fifteen bucks a, a side, or even a little less whatever more it's worth it there are the gaps where they bent over so I had to fill in those gaps I, I, I kinda had to like I couldn't go all the way through I had to sort of hit it and then weld it hit it because you know you know how you feel like because it's on the edge right um, it can cause the, the the edge to blow out, and so I had to be real careful as to how I was uh, welding those seams, so that it wouldn't blow out the edge, and then I'd have then I'd have to fill it in, and so so I did that and off all four corners. Now here, I, <laughs> you probably get a kick out of this. I had to put these chains on, and they were a pain in the butt. I mean, they were not easy to do. Um, <sighs> You know, I probably could have turned the the lid over and, and done it that way, or I'm sure there was probably an easier way. I could have done the top first and the bottom, but 
you know, honestly, I, I couldn't find one. So I said, forget it. I just put my body inside of it and said, okay, I'm just going to weld it this way. It amazes me that that box could fit, could, that I could fit in there as big as I am. I was surprised. There was a lot of discomfort in there, you know. Here I was trying to get some light, at the same time trying to fix my mask. You'll probably never see something like this ever. <laughs> Only here on this channel. I don't think that TIG welding the inside of that would have been <laughs> the way to go. Even as a master TIGger, uh, TIG welder, it probably would have just been really frustrating trying to do it that way. So here's uh, basically the finished product. Um, and you can see where I've sanded, where the mill scale is at. Some of the mill scale is off of it. Um, now I'm going to go in and start cleaning it up with some acetone. And believe me when I, when, when I say I took off a lot of, uh, you know, grinding sediment and stuff like that. I mean, there was a lot on it, especially time where my legs are at. I mean, because that was just, it was basically like a capturing, a place to capture all of the sparks and everything. And it just, it was so dirty. I went through a ton of uh, rags and stuff. There are these rags that I buy at Home Depot. They're almost like cotton rags, but they're not. They're, they're, they're made of paper, but they feel like cotton. And they don't, uh, they're not painter's rags. But you get it in the painting section, and I and I don't have that name on me now. But um, they work wonderful. I use them for when I powder coat. You know, when I'm cleaning something prior to powder coat, I used to use those blue rags. But a lot of times, those blue rags would get they they would uh, leave a some of that that blue stuff behind or whatever was on the the paper towel itself behind. But these towels don't. They they come in a box, and they're 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 really really useful. There I am cleaning the inside. Took me a while to get that inside cleaned well. Again, you know, this is the prep work, right? And keep in mind that I also, you know, grinded those welds down all the way. Anytime, anywhere there was an outside weld, I tried to grind as flush as I can without compromising the, the, the weld itself. Here's a, here it's now on dollies, finally, which I should have done like, you know, years ago when I started building this box. But I wasn't thinking. It made it a lot easier. But by the time this lid was on this box, it was heavy. Very heavy. Um, you can see the hinges are on there too. I already knew at this point that once I got that primer on that box, it was going to start looking real nice. Real nice. I mean, it was... Uh, one thing I do want to mention is when I got my pieces, I didn't get them all at once. I got the, I got the top and bottom and side panels first, including the back. Once I had all that welded in, I got the... Um, the two inch flat pieces for the lips um, not for the lips but for the you know for the for the front fascia side you know top and bottom and, and sides once I did that then I cut down the, the two inch flat stock for the lips I didn't the reason why I didn't get the you know all of the, the, the flat stock prior was because sometimes I'm a little off in my measurement, you know, and, and 
I didn't want to. Sometimes I don't always know how a you know how to how a job's going to come out. Part of a job's going to come out, and so I try to wait and see how far I get. And for me, taking another trip to the to the steel place um, is worth it because then when I go, I, I know for certain that this is a measurement that I need, and I know exactly how much I'm going to need to get for whatever else I need to add on to to the project that I'm doing. See how easy it is to roll on those dollies? Just like night and day. I was getting kind of excited at this point because I knew that now I was at the I was at the uh, at the stage where it was going to be painted, and I don't have anywhere to paint my garage. So before we get to this point, I did put up a canopy outside on my driveway with a tarp on the bottom of it. I used like a painter's tarp. And right now here in Oregon, we got some relatively cold weather. And then I used some uh, three mil, I think three mil or like a, a thick mil millimeter plastic that went around the canopy itself. And you'll see that in a minute at some point um, you know when you don't have like a really big garage and a whole lot of space it's interesting how you you do whatever you have to do to get a job done you know I mean you you become innovative in your space in your goal to get a project done or even paint something At this point, I had tons of rags on the floor. Acetone is a really good, I mean, it's really worked well for me when it came to pre-paint. It's a nice pre-paint product to use, I think, for steel. Eastwood has a product, too, um, that uh, I think it's called, well, it might be called pre-paint cleaner or something, but... <coughs> I really like it. Thing is, is that they're about six or seven bucks a bottle, and you know you can get a whole gallon or more of acetone uh, that would last a lot longer. Oh, looks like my daughter's calling me. So. There I am doing some more prep work here. Everything's in the prep prior to any paint you put down. I could feel that it was starting to get nice and clean. Um, and look at those chains on there. They're just solid. Now, of course, I really, I, I always suggest do a good vacuum. I think a good vacuum is great, especially in, in this part because, um, you know, I mean, there's still debris in there that cleaning off with some acetone in the rag is not going to help. <laughs> and I'm still uh, making sure I vacuum all the debris, get it nice and clean. And now we're ready to put on a primer. And there's the primer. I put a, one coat on and I, I think this is the second coat. I'm touching up areas as well. Now I, I set up this canopy on my driveway so basically it's just one of those 10 by 10 canopies you buy at your local uh, hardware store or whatever you know wherever <clears throat> and I set it up and then put some of that plastic all the way around it and I got a thick mill plastic because I didn't want um, I didn't want it to tear easily from you know anything or the wind or whatever but 
it seemed to work out pretty good. I used to paint in my garage, but that simply just didn't work out for me anymore. It, it's a real pain doing it out here and then just leaving the tent just like or the canopy with the plastic around like that and the tarp on the ground worked out perfectly for this job or even for my powder coating thankfully the neighbors uh, are real good about not being um, you know they don't get upset with me for doing stuff like this and they pretty much know I I'm a do-it-yourselfer kind of guy and they it's good to have good neighbors that way. It's not going to be up forever, but it will be up for a little while. And I'm just shaking that can every so often to make certain that... Oh, it, um, Get good coverage. I have to say it's looking real good. It took about, I left it out in the tent for about three days before I moved it, or actually um, about two days I left the primer on, then I came and did uh, a few coats of black, let it sit out another day or two, and then I brought it in the house. I know some of you might be thinking, why didn't I set up a fan? So, you know, I wish I had, but I don't know. I got kind of lazy about it and I didn't want to figure out how I was going to redirect the fan out the other way. And, and there we have it. Hey, folks, thanks for watching that video. I'm all done. And it, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I did it. It looks great. I, at first, I didn't think I was going to be able to tackle this job, um, but I thought the same thing when I did my welder's table, and that came out pretty good, too. So, um, I have it in my house right now because I find that when I rattle, well, basically, it's too cold outside to have it cure, and so in this, in the house, it's got the right climate, and, and after a couple of weeks, it'll, that, that paint will harden real nice. Um, so let's go ahead and go over some of the details of this job and I will see, move this over here. There's my dog over there to the left taking a little snooze. You know, he's always chilling. He, he chills with his tongue out. Okay. Anyway, this is 15, less than 15 minutes of fame there. <laughs> All right. All right. So let me go ahead and um, get this down right. Okay. Okay, the latches were, uh, I got the latches from Northern Tool. When I got this piece of steel from the warehouse, I had them actually bend the corners for me. I think, I, I really didn't want to have to go out and get some flat stock and weld the seam all the way down here, all the way down there, and all the way down there. I mean, it was hard enough welding all the seams on the inside of the box, and some on the outside as well. Um, the latches work really nice. I like them. I was a little concerned about, you know, the measurement between making the hole and making certain that the, you know, the, the lock would clip on the back of the box. And it did. So I was kind of happy about that. The cool thing about this box is I did not use the same gauge steel all the way around. The top, bottom, and side, uh, side and back panels of this box were uh, 14 gauge. The rest of it was 11 and 12 gauge. Um, the door is definitely thicker because I wanted the person who's getting this box to be able to load his tools on it without having to worry about, you know, warping or causing any dents in the steel or whatever on the on, on the door a lot, I mean I've had toolboxes I just thought of it from my point of view and I've always 
you know, wish that they would make stronger doors on toolboxes because a lot of times contractors throw their stuff all over the door and they just let it sit there, which leads me to the reason why I put these hefty chains on here. You will not find a box anywhere, brand new, off the, off the shelf with these chains welded like this to this lid. Um, it is solid. I mean, the, the chains are thick, um, and I've got three of them, you know, one in the middle and one on each side. So it's going to hold up real nice for him. Um, he's going to be real giddy when he gets it. Let's see. And, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but, you know, I also, when I welded this flat stock all the way around, these pieces here, here, let me grab the... All right, so again, if you can see this, it's kind of dark in here. I, I made certain that this piece here, which is the, you know, obviously the top piece, I knew this was going to be the top piece, and so I welded, I, I put this at an angle so that when it rained, rained it would, you know, the water would, would hit, but it wouldn't crawl over. It would sort of hit and go this way. Um, of course, this uh, trim lock trimming that I put all the way around will also give it a nice tight, uh, a tight seal. <clears throat> and so that's pretty much it. I mean, it looks like some of the, it looks like the paint is uneven, but actually, in the right light, it came out pr looking pretty good. It's a big box really big probably the biggest one I've seen so far I mean you've got boxes for for you know big rigs and stuff but going on the back of a regular truck this thing is gonna take up some room and as you can see you see the lighting in here is terrible there are the chains I was telling you about there's one there one there and one there let's get a little closer on the chain I don't know why I'm so fixated on the chain but I mean, I even painted it, and welded it to the door. Let's go back here. So when I welded all the seams inside this box, um, again, I had to use, I had to variate my voltage as well as actually my the thickness of steel that I was uh, welding because you know when you weld a seam 91 inches all the way down to the end you know from end to end and then from corner to corner and then from, you know again from end to end it gets hot in there and it can cause warpage and that was my concern and it did cause warpage but mainly, well, I mean, it did on, on, on the panels a little bit, but mainly on the, on, on these, uh, on the flat stock, because you had all this heat along the edge, and, you know, I started out with a piece of flat stock, and then it started to, I could see where the warping was happening, but it was unavoidable for me. I mean, of course, if you guys have a better way of doing it, let me know I, how I could have done it, so that when I do my next box, I'll, I'll tackle it differently, but... Nonetheless, it's not something you really notice, especially with that trim lock uh, trimming over it. And so the, again, this is going to go on the back of a contractor's truck. The guy's going to actually put it on his long bed truck, but it's going to go off to the side. I think it's, I don't know, seems like, I mean, he's obviously going to need some support, a support system under it. But this is exactly what he wanted. It's 18 by 20, let's see, 18 high 20 wide 91 inches long and the total cost in materials only was less than four hundred ninety dollars now this is partly because I had them do some of the cutting because I simply didn't have the time and they charge oh God, you would believe it they charge I think ten bucks a cut and a cut is like take some I don't know 10 seconds once it's on the once it's on the handbrake so 
it's one of my rants that I have. You know, I, I think it's kind of a rip that they charge you, especially if you come in all the time to buy steel. But man, they, I don't know. It's the way it goes. Anyway, so let me put this back on the try. So basically, guys, if you like what you see, if you enjoyed the presentation, um, if you have any advice, any comments, or you know, you want to subscribe and share this video, please do. I, you know, I, I'm encouraged by and I'm inspired by you guys who tend, you know, who like my my work and who don't like my work and want to say something about it or whatever, man. You know, I just I do what I do, not not just for you guys, but I do it for me as well, obviously. Uh, so thanks for visiting Eddie's Garage, and we'll get back at you guys at another time. Take care.